Thank you for joining me today. As you can see, I'm not at home, not in my usual setting, but I hope that doesn't uh, in any way detract from the things that I want to share this morning for uh, concerning, uh, concerning the Scripture. Uh, I'm in the book of First Chronicles, and as you understand, the book of First Chronicles is one of the uh, it's kind of a difficult book because it's just a list of names and genealogies and that sort of thing. The, the thing that I encourage people to recognize as they, uh, as they read through books like that or passages of Scripture that are uh, lengthy and don't have any real uh, application to us is that we recognize that these things are, uh, are historical in nature. And our faith is rooted in that which is historical. There are those people who dismiss the history of the, of the Old and the New Testaments and, and try to make it simply a spiritual book. But that's not what um, the basis of our faith is. Our faith is rooted in historical facts. And whenever I read the genealogies like that, that's what I'm noticing. Now, first of all, I want you to notice here in chapter 5 that the first two verses talk about the inheritance of Jacob, that Reuben was intended to be, because of the, uh, his position in the family as the oldest son, he should have been the one to inherit uh, most of Jacob's uh, uh, property and, uh, and he would be the one to carry on his father's legacy that way. But because of his defiling his father's bed, he ended up forfeiting his birthright. Now we don't not really know anything more about it than that. Um, it's mentioned a couple of places in Scripture, but all we know is that Reuben went into one of Jacob's concubines and uh, had sexual relations with her, and that in itself was enough to forfeit his inheritance. Now, Reuben was the oldest of his sons, and he was the son of his first wife, Leah, but the firstborn of his, um, of his second wife, Rachel, was uh, the son later on down the line, that would have been Joseph. And so this passage speaks about the importance of Joseph and, his, and, it fall, and the uh, birthright falling to Joseph. But only part of it fell to Joseph here because we have another character in the midst of it, and, and that's Judah. And again, I can't say that I fully understand all the dynamics that have gone on here, but I do know that at the end of um, at the end of the book of Genesis, when Jacob is blessing all of his sons, it says that the scepter will not uh, depart from Judah. And so there are parts of jo um, uh, Jacob's inheritance that are given specifically to Joseph, but there are other parts, specifically his dignity and longevity that way, that are given to Judah. And so, of course, we recognize that the Lord Jesus was the descendant of Judah through David, and, and all of those things were a part of his particular heritage. So. He was one who came to, uh, to reign in the line of David as it is predicted, as it had to be uh, fulfilled. And David, of course, was from the tribe of Judah so that this particular, um, uh, this inheritance fell to him. Now, the good, the, the good thing that we need to understand about uh, the inheritance and these genealogies is that God doesn't step away from his history and he doesn't step away from sin in the midst of those times. He is one who deals with those things and he deals with them justly and equitably. Now, we may not understand all of the ways that he deals with them, but we should be confident that he is dealing with those in a right and a proper way. 
So, so even though we live in a different system today, we uh, give to our uh, descendants in our wills and in our inheritance, usually we divide those things equally. In that day, it was the uh, right of the firstborn to gain two-thirds and the right of the uh, rest of the children to gain about one-third. And that was something that was consistent throughout many cultures in, uh, up until recent years. Nonetheless, the Lord is the one that oversees all of that, and we recognize who are in Christ that we enjoy fully the inheritance that we have in him, just as Judah enjoyed the preeminence and the inheritance that he had in his father's estate. Father, we thank you for the inheritance that we have through Christ. Thank you that we are heirs with Jesus and co-heirs with him. And we praise you for the grace that you've shown us. And we, we look forward, Father, to that day when uh, all of that will be laid at your feet anyway. And we will just give ourselves in full worship and adoration to the true and living God. May you be honored now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.